Florida is well known for its incredible diversity of animal species, and no matter where you explore in the state, you are bound to encounter some fascinating wildlife. Though Florida boasts great ecological richness, it is also host to a staggering number of invasive species that have been introduced to the region. An invasive species is defined as any organism that establishes a population in an area where it is not native, and goes on to inflict some sort of negative impact on the local ecosystem. Due to its subtropical climate and abundant commerce, Florida is home to more invasive species than almost anywhere else in the world, with hundreds of species of invasive invertebrates, fish, amphibians, and more. We were able to get several of these introduced animals in front of the cameras, and that is exactly what we'd like to show you today. Get ready to meet some exotic wonders from around the world and learn a little bit about the impact that they're having on Florida's biodiversity. We're out here night herping and we actually came across a species that is familiar to us. Check this guy out. This is an Asian house gecko. Now for those of you who have seen our Costa Rica series, you would know that we've encountered this species before. But just like they are invasive down in Central America, they are also invasive here in Southern Florida. This is the perfect climate for them as it is tropical like their native range down in Southeast Asia. And much like their Central American brethren, these guys were brought over in shipments of furniture and other commerce that came from Asia. Now, one thing I wanted to show you about this little gecko is actually his tail, or more aptly, his lack thereof. So if you see, he's actually missing his tail, and if you notice how fresh that injury is, I probably would guess that that happened tonight. Now, we have no way of knowing exactly how that happened, all we do know is that he made it into, actually, our house. So he's safe from predators for now, but they have an ability called caudual autonomy, the ability to drop your tail off when threatened by a predator. So luckily, his tail will grow back, but for now, he's a little bit more vulnerable to predators, such as a bird or a larger lizard. You're gonna give me a bite? Oh, look at that. His mouth is open, but I think he realizes that Though I'm big and scary, I'm not going to eat him. So, with nothing else to do, let's put him back and see what else we can find. So this little guy here is the yellow-banded millipede, yet another invasive species we've encountered here on our night herping expedition. Now the yellow-banded millipede, as I mentioned, is an introduced species here in southern Florida, and you can see that very striking coloration, those yellow bands that run along the entirety of their body, is textbook aposematic coloration aka warning colors that would warn any potential predator, you don't want to mess with me, I'm toxic. Now this is a highly poisonous species, so for any of the little passerines or uh, little wading birds that might try and eat this guy, they would have a very bad day with a pretty upset stomach, and that's what those colors are warning them of. Now this species will get anywhere from one to four inches in length, so this is about, um, about mid-size for for this species, I would say. And it is a nocturnal species, like most millipedes, so it's probably out here feeding on some decaying plant matter. That's gonna be their, their primary food source. And look at all of those legs. Unlike most of the invertebrates we featured on the channel, this is not, in fact, an insect. This is actually what's called a myriopod, meaning many, uh, many footed. And you can see where they get that name from. They have a ton of those little legs and they move in that very rhythmic pattern. It's actually quite interesting to watch. So I think we're gonna let this little guy get back on his way now. Let's see what else is out here. Not five seconds after Evan just released that yellow banded millipede, we came across this rusty millipede. Now this is also an invasive species of myriopod here in southern Florida. These guys are originally found throughout Southeast Asia through Cambodia, Vietnam, and all the way down through India, but they've been introduced to Eastern Africa, the Caribbean, and here in southern Florida. Now they are filling the same ecological niche as the yellow-banded millipede, so these guys are what are called detritivores, which means they're eating detritus, or decaying matter, in their case, mostly wood and fruit, things like that. 
I do not believe that this species is poisonous or nearly as poisonous as the yellow banded millipede, but they have that gorgeous rusty color from which they get their name that runs all the way down the length of their body, which makes this an incredibly distinct species of millipede. So in about a minute and a half, that is two different species of millipedes and a testament to the ecological diversity here in Southern Florida. This guy here is the Cuban tree frog, one of the most common tree frog species that we get here in Southern Florida. And as its name suggests, this is not a native species. In fact, they are found down in the Caribbean, especially in Cuba and the Bahamas. Now this guy has been introduced to Florida, like a lot of the other invasive species, via both the pet trade and just general commerce between the Caribbean and the US, and he's become well established here in Florida. And unfortunately, he is out competing a lot of the native tree frog species, such as squirrel tree frogs and American green tree frogs, but this guy is just a small one. The Cuban tree frog gets absolutely massive as far as tree frogs are concerned, and they will actually be able to eat just about anything they want. Small insects, lizards, other frogs, these guys are voracious predators. So as I mentioned, this is a very small one, and he's actually quite pretty. He has great camouflage. We just found him in a little hole that's right below me, and he has those big eyes that indicate that he is a nocturnal species. So when the sun has already gone down, the temperature has cooled down a lot, that is exactly when these guys like to come out. They're fantastic climbers. As you can see, he has those pads on his feet that help him climb virtually any surface he wants to. And unfortunately, he is invasive, but there's not too much we can do with him. We certainly don't want to kill him. So the best thing we can do is just let him back out into the environment to hopefully hunt some more insects and not native frog species. So we've come across another Cuban tree frog here. And as Harrison mentioned earlier, this is an invasive species. Now, the easiest way to tell the Cuban tree frog apart from other native species that you'll find here in Southern Florida is if you take a look at that head there, you and if you actually were to give it a little feel, you'd actually feel that it's a very hard and rough texture that is very uncharacteristic for native tree frog species. Other species are gonna have a much softer, fleshier head, but in the case of the Cuban tree frog, it's very hard and that adds an extra layer of protection for these guys. I hear you croaking. Now take a look at those gorgeous golden eyes. They have very large pupils compared to the size of their eyes and that's to let a lot of light filter in. This is a nocturnal species, as Harrison mentioned. And another unique thing about this species is that they're actually highly poisonous. Now for a human, it wouldn't really do that much damage, even if you were to eat one of these. I don't know why you would, but for a potential predator, it can actually cause some serious stomach pains. So you definitely, if you were a bird of prey or perhaps a snake, a larger frog, you would definitely want to leave this species well enough alone while you're hunting. So really glad to come across another one of these cute little frogs. We're gonna get him back out into the environment and let him be on his way. Now this guy is what an adult Cuban tree frog looks like. So take a look at what he's doing with his body. He's puffing himself up to make him look large and in fact too big to swallow. Now, as Evan pointed out earlier, take a look at his head there. This is where it's really evident how hard and bony his head is. I'm just gonna give him a little pet. That is incredibly dense. You can also see he is a poisonous animal. And there's a little bit of yellow by his forelimbs and also by his back limbs. That is aposomatic coloration, which tells potential predators that he is toxic. Now, as long as I wash my hands, I won't have any problems, but we wanted to show you just how big this tree frog species gets. It is actually the largest tree frog species in North America. He is absolutely massive. One of the common traits among successful invasive species is their astounding adaptability. Species that are naturally resilient and can readily adapt to significant change often do very well when introduced to new regions. Some of the species you met today can be found on the other side of the world from us here in the US. But nonetheless, their populations are continuing to grow in Florida. The effects that these species will have on Florida's wildlife in the future are uncertain. But unfortunately, an overabundance of invasive species generally doesn't bode well for the native ecosystem. However, it is important to remember that these animals did not reach Florida of their own accord. Invasive species are a product of human expansion. 
it is not the animal's fault that it has been introduced to a new region. We must find innovative solutions to combat their expansion and mitigate further introduction of invasives, but it is also important to respect these animals as the incredibly adaptable and unique species that we know them to be. There is a lot of work to be done to address the issues that invasive species impose on the ecosystem, but the work starts with educating people about these animals and developing compassion for them as they are. If you enjoyed learning about these wild Floridian invasives, leave a like on the video and tell us in the comments down below if you have ever seen an invasive species in the wild before. And be sure to subscribe to the Wildlife Brothers now so you don't miss any of our exciting content coming out very soon.